Welcome to the Core Network, where we propagate the honor of the created word of God. Today, we have a wonderful topic, which I know you'll be interested in, is the brevity of life. Life is really short. It doesn't matter your level in life. It doesn't matter how healthy you are. Life is short. The strong are dying. The weak are dying. Everybody's just going one by one. And always you watch the obituary of others and you're like, oh, he's gone. That's my very good friend. I, I know. And then this is how life is. And this is the only guarantee about life is death. No matter who you are, one day you also check out. So that's why today we've, we've called upon great men of God to come and speak unto us about the brevity of life. There is a message here. There is a wisdom that God has given to them to give to us. And this message is, is live on, on Facebook. You can get it recorded on um, YouTube. Those who are, who are going to listen via uh, Radio Power, all this will be available unto, unto you. So if you are listening today, I believe that God has called you to hear this word because he doesn't want you to die just like that. You have to fulfill your purpose, irrespective of the years that he has given unto, unto you that nobody knows. So stay Stay put, invite your friends, and I believe you'll be blessed. All the way from the UK, uh, our big brother, Pastor Abi, man of God, you are more than welcome. Amen. Praise the Lord. Our God is good. Uh, and all the time the Lord is good to us. I, we always, you know, we always consider it a privilege to be on, on the cold network um, because of what God is doing and because of what God is still going to do. God is, God is, God is, God has decided to use us in the cold network as a battle axe for this end time. And we shall not fail him in Jesus' name. You know, tonight is a very big topic and it's interesting because uh, we're talking about the brevity of life especially uh, about a couple of days after the passing of Her Majesty, the Queen of England, um, a woman honored and respectable, respected in every way around the world, mm -hmm. uh, as, you, as everybody can see. But then when we talk about the brevity of life, sometimes we think about young people dying. You know, we think about people who are, you know, under 20, people who are uh, under 50, people who are uh, only 60 plus. You know, when somebody who is 60 dies, we say, well, that's young, mm -hmm. amen, because life is brief. But then if somebody who is 96 dies, we think, well, she spent a really good lifetime. But then I remember something, there was, a, there was an interview many years ago and uh, Muhammad Ali was interviewed and they were the, they got talking about eternity. And I like, I like his analogy about eternity. He said eternity to him. He said it's like when you take the whole of the sand in the Sahara Desert, uh, take the desert, the whole desert, the Sahara Desert, he said, and be taking one grain of sand every day, be taking one grain of sand every day. He said, Sahara Desert will be depleted, it will be finished. He said eternity will still carry on. You know, so when we look at that, it makes no difference how long somebody lives on the earth. If you like, live a hundred years, a hundred and twenty even, it will still be brief compared to eternity. Amen. So eternity is so, so, so important and it's very important for us to think about it and understand that, you know, if when you think about this, when you think eternity stands there, as the Bible says, God has put eternity in the heart of men. Amen. He put, he placed it, eternity in our heart mm -hmm. and he expects us to think about eternity, mm -hmm. you know, because it doesn't matter how long we live on the earth, it's still going to be very brief compared with eternity. Mm -hmm. Amen. So, you know, when I was thinking about this topic, I was thinking, well, we can come and say, well, guys, you need to get ready because death can catch up with, with anybody at any time. Life is very brief. Like I already said, it makes no difference whether you live to a hundred or you live to, or, or, you, or, or a child that dies at birth. When you put everything together and now compare it to, we're not talking about a thousand years. Amen. We're not talking about a million years, even. We're not talking about 10 million years. We're talking about eternity. Amen. It's not comparable. Now think about that. If this short time that we're spending here is what determines 
eternity. It's what determines how we spend eternity. I better spend it right. Amen. I better st spend it right. You know, I, I was reading the book of John. You know, uh, you, you probably know me by now that I love the book of John. You know, he says in chapter one from verse one, in the beginning was the word. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God. The word was God, which was in the beginning with God. Amen. When I got to that place, I said to myself, the beginning is not the beginning of God. It is our beginning. You know, a while back, well, a long time ago, when I'm reading history and I'm reading about, I'm reading about Mungo Park discovered the source of River Niger. I'm saying, why? How can he discover the source of River Niger when there were people there when he got there? You know, how come? How can that be a discovery that, that I'm reading about? I'm reading about these these people discovered that that uh, the, that uh, was his name discovered America. I'm saying, well, when he got there, there were people there. Then I then I said to myself, I said, you don't need to be angry with this because every history you're reading is the historian's history. It's not my history, amen, is, is the historian's record, amen. So, so when, if I have that at the back of my mind and I read in the beginning was the word and the word was with God, the word was God. That's not the beginning of God. God was there at the beginning. If God was there at the beginning and it was God, it's not his own beginning. He was already there, but it's our beginning. Amen. You know, when, when we think like that, even, and I'm thinking God was there at the beginning, when there was nothing on the earth, when there was no earth, when there was no heaven, God was there and God was still God. Amen. You know, sometimes we think we serve God and it gives us, this is me digressing a little bit. We, we think we serve God and we, we got this chip on our shoulders that, oh, I'm serving God. Oh, I'm singing to him. Oh, I'm, that, that, all of that don't make him God. Mm -hmm. He is still going to be God with or without my worship. Mm -hmm. My worship does not make him God. Mm -hmm. You know, we need to always remember that. It doesn't make him God. He's always going to be God. Mm -hmm. So it says, in the, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God, mm -hmm. which was in the beginning with God. It says he was in the beginning. Uh, sorry, he says, um, where, is, where am I? Verse uh, Two, he was in the beginning with God, and all things were made through him. Mm -hmm. And without him, nothing was made that has been made. It now goes ahead in verse four. It says, In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Mm -hmm. And the light shines in darkness, and darkness does not comprehend it. Darkness comprehended it not. You know, when, when, when I get to that place, where I know we're talking about the brevity of life. God said to God said to uh, what's his name? God said to Jeremiah. I said before your father, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Amen. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. God already knew us before he. He said, and I called you and I commissioned you. I sent you as a prophet to the nation before your parents set their eyes on you, before you were formed in the womb. You know, sometimes this you I always like to, I always like to sound this warning. This should be a warning to people who think, you know, the pro-choice people who thinks you know a woman should a woman should have the right to do anything with her body uh, abortion should be there's nothing wrong with abortion god said before i formed you i knew you that child it makes no difference on which side the child is whether it's a in the womb is a human being when it's out of the womb it's still a human being god said before i formed you i already knew you i already gave you an assignment amen mm -hmm. that i just thought i would drop that mm -hmm. but why am i telling this story because we're talking about the brevity of life he said before i formed you in the womb i knew you and then i commissioned you i called you and sent you forth as a prophet to the nation Amen. He says, uh, let, let me let me quickly finish this. Uh, oh, oh, he say, and the light shines in darkness and darkness does not comprehend it. The light shines in darkness and darkness does not. I'm talking about the brevity of life. Life is short. But, but, but the life that we're talking about is that we're measuring the life in this side of time. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because time itself, as you know, we, uh, the Bible says to God, he said, 
a day is like a thousand years and a thousand years is like it's like a day you know it's it's all this you know that's why sometimes when we are saying god i've been waiting for 10 years and god looks at us and smiles and says, yeah it's a long time really it's a long time but it's not up to one day in my in my calendar because god but this is where I'm going. God, when God at the beginning, before the beginning of time, he knew us before the beginning of time. And when time will stop being measured, amen, he says, we'll return to him. Praise God. So when we're talking about the brevity of life, we're actually talking about the brevity of time. We're talking about it life in this flesh. I just thought our life in this flesh is very short. But because, you know, every, every, every person God created lives forever. Mm. Amen. Every single person God created lives forever. Mm. You know, th this is one thing that everybody needs to understand. Forever is a very long time. Mm. Everybody lives forever. The question is, where would I live forever? Where would I, where would that forever, where would my forever be? Mm. You know, my forever, you know, somebody's forever, you know, the Bible says there was, there was a rich man. You know, there was a rich man, and then there was a poor guy with covered in soul who, who you know, ate from the, you know, ate from the, like, from the bean that is in front of the rich man's, rich man's house. He ate from droppings from the table. Amen. And then the Bible says both of them died because death comes to everyone. You know, that is, uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Daniel was saying at the beginning of the, of the broadcast that it comes to everybody. Amen. <laughs> unless jesus unless jesus you know if jesus tarries every single one of us will grow to a certain age and then we'll pass on because that's how god has uh, has set things in place but the, the bible says death came to both of them and and then the 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 the, the uh the old the, the rich guy died and the bible says he went to a place of torment he said but lazarus the, the, the one covered in soul also died. And then it was carried to Abraham's bosom. Mm -hmm. And then the Bible says this, oh, this, this rich guy then lifted up his eyes. So, so it makes me to think Lazarus was up, he was down. He lifted up his eyes and saw Lazarus and mm -hmm. saw Father Abraham. And then he, he begged Father Abraham, he said, please, he said, let Lazarus dip his mm -hmm. finger in water. Mm -hmm. Look at, you know, sometimes you want, you want a drink. You know, sometimes I want a drink. People give me a drink and I say, oh, you know, can you not get me something cold? You know, get, get me something cold. And when they get me something cold in my in, indulgence, I say, well, can you not please uh, get, get me fizzy, you know, I, I shouldn't be drinking that stuff. Get me fizzy, give me something that has sugar, you know, so because, yeah, because that's what I like to drink. Some of us probably drink other things. And then I drink, I go, ah, this is nice. I say, give me some more. But no, this guy did not have that luxury. He said, let Lazarus just dip his finger in water and come and cool just drop just one drop how much how much is one drop of water he said to cool my tongue he said because mm -hmm. i am tormented in this place amen mm -hmm. uh, we're talking about the brevity of life but what i'm trying to establish first is look guys whether you whether you're a good person or you're a bad person whether you're a, you're, you're you're a christian or you're not a, whether you believe in jesus or you do not believe in i hope you do believe i hope you do believe in jesus but if you choose not to believe everybody lives forever death is not an end and as a matter of fact i think that is one thing we need to understand we need to sound it very very clearly death is not an end consciousness survives death somebody says oh yeah but have you been there have you gone and come back no i haven't gone and come back but i've read in the scriptures and the holy scriptures cannot be broken amen you know people people think people think the word of god is just you know it's, it's just you know it's just human beings writing there is no other there's no other book like this book we're reading amen if we this book has been subjected to scientific scientific um uh uh, uh you know they, they've they've tried to examine i mean scientific examination mm -hmm. to see how can mm -hmm. is this really true mm -hmm. is this and the authenticity of the word of god is mm -hmm. mind-blowing Amen. Mm. That's even when you look at it mm. scientifically. So mm. if I was you, 
I will rest my hope on it because mm -hmm. there are certain things that are shakable. God said, I'm coming by. He said, I will shake the whole world. He said, there are the things that are loose. He said, it will fall off. There are certain things that will stand. One of the things that will stand is the word of God. It cannot be broken. We're talking about the brevity of life. Amen. You know, I, I, you know, I, I said it makes no difference whether you're living right or you're living wrong. Everybody's going to live forever. But there is a difference between where we live. Amen. There is a difference between the postcode that will be my postcode and the postcode that will be the postcode of the person not who do not believe in Jesus Christ. And I think, you know, because we're talking about the brevity of life, I think I should I should remind us that good people don't go to heaven. Amen. Good people, moral people don't go to heaven. It's good to be it's good to be good and it's good to have morals. But those that is not the qual that is not the qualifying uh, the qualifying the qualifying start. Uh, um, that is, that, is not the, that is not the thing God is looking for, for to, to admit. It's not the admittance. That is not the admittance criteria into heaven. You can be good all you want. Amen. But what, what determines whether I go to heaven or I do not? is do I believe in mm. Jesus? Mm. That's why Jesus said, nobody, called, nobody comes to the Father except mm. by me. That's a very big mm. assertion to me. Mm. So when mm. somebody says, yeah, but all, mm. all religions are the same, it's not true. Mm. We've, got to, we've mm. got to understand this fact. We've got to understand this truth that what God is saying mm. to us is no, it's not. It's not, they are not the same. Mm. They don't know, you know, the difference between Christianity and all, the, all other religions is profound in in every religion man is trying his best to please god mm. man is trying his best. man man is you know man is laboring to please god is trying put in service to please god but no it's not so in christianity in christianity god came down and died because mm. all have fallen short, you know, all, everything, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Mm. So God came down and rescued us mm. and there's no other way to do it, mm. but through that rescue package. Mm. So what God expects for us to do is mm. to accept it. Mm. Amen. It sounds so simple, but that is the truth. We mm. just got to accept what God has done for us. Mm. And if you haven't accepted that, mm. please go ahead and accept him amen because people go to hell not because of the sin they have committed amen it sounds it sounds funny but they go to hell because they've not received the remedy for the mm -hmm. sin they have committed he said for all have sinned he said my righteousness even if i do so so well is like a filthy rag before him mm -hmm. amen so i need to the only improvement that i can have on that is the righteousness of God in Christ mm. Jesus. And I pray everyone that is listening to the sound of my voice tonight, mm. whether you're listening by replay, you're listening because you've gone on, to, you found it on the YouTube, please give your life to Jesus. Mm. It is by faith. Mm. It is it is by mm. faith. It is not by works. Amen. Mm. Lest anyone should boast. Mm. Now let's go back. We're talking about the brevity of life. You know, people like Abraham, you know, if, if we're one of the things uh, Dr. Daniel said, he said we live on this earth as if we're going to live forever. Amen. We build our castles. We build our. We build everything that we like to have. Oh, I want to have this. Oh, I want to have that. So we go ahead and get it. Uh, and if if there's if we, on on our prayer list, we make we make our prayer list at the beginning of the year. And if you go through your prayer list, oh, I want this. I want this. I want that. I want my child to go into this. I want my child to go into that. I want my husband to have this. I want my wife to have this. Oh, we want to this house. We want to move away from this house. Oh, this car. We want to change the car this year. We have our prayer list. Am I saying this is wrong? I'm not saying that it's wrong, but my faith should not be based on all of that. Mm. Amen. Because mm. whether in 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 a, in in a hundred years time, amen, nobody is going is going to care what what car you drove. Mm. In a hundred years time, just mm. one hundred, nobody is really going to care what house what houses mm. you lived in. In a hundred years, nobody will care what clothes you wear. Mm. Amen. But the lives that you touch for the king. Kingdom that will remain forever. Amen. You know, I, 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 I think it's time for us to begin to think about eternity. But as we think about eternity, think about posterity. Mm -hmm. Prosperity is good. 
good, but posterity is better. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Mm -hmm. Posterity, that is better. One day, you know, one day the owner of this life will come mm -hmm. back and knock on mm -hmm. the door and mm -hmm. say, well, that which I loaned to you. Mm -hmm. And you know what? We will not be able to, we will not even be able to query him. Mm -hmm. Amen. We won't be able to say, well, maybe tomorrow, you know, somebody, if somebody comes to your door and say, well, you owe me some money. Can I have it today? And say, well, sorry, mm -hmm. I haven't got it today. Come back next month. He will say, well, okay, I'll come back next month. Uh, yeah. you, but this is different. Mm. Amen. We we cannot argue mm. with him. He come when he comes, it comes. Yes. You know, for uh, just now I remember I remember my late brother, you know, he he, he met him on the subway in New York. He lived in New York for a very long time. And but when he got to the end of his rope, he called 911. Before they got to him, he was gone. Amen. But I thank God for the life he lived just mm. before he passed mm. on. Praise God. Mm. So every single one of us got to be careful and got to be mindful of this. That's why somebody wrote in the book, you know, he said, start with the end in mind. Mm. When I'm gone, what will be written concerning me? Mm. Well, you know, everything that I believe God wants me to do, have I started them? What am I waiting for? Mm. Amen. Because Jesus said, Jesus said, he said, take no thought for tomorrow. He said, tomorrow will think about its own things. Mm -hmm. It says sufficient for the days are the evil thereof. Mm -hmm. Amen. He said concerning tomorrow, take no thought for it. He didn't promise you tomorrow. Mm -hmm. he, you know, he never promised. He said, he said, somebody said, but he said with long life would I satisfy you. Mm -hmm. Amen. I said to I said to one of my friends, I said, well, God said, he, he says in the Bible, he said, why don't I, he said, I said, well, birthdays are good. I said, but God never said, you know, God, I said, I don't say celebrate birthday. He said, why don't you celebrate birthday? I said, well, I said, well, I really have no reason. I said, but I have found one. I said, it says, it says, teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. He didn't say teach us to number our years. He didn't say teach us number our months. He didn't say teach us number our weeks, but it says teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. You know, if you think, if you think I've got one year to do this, You'll be lethargic, amen. You'll be mm -hmm. complacent. You feel well. I can do it tomorrow. I can do it next month. I can do it, and that's why sometimes by the time it comes to November, December, we feel, oh my God, the year's gone. I've not done anything I said I was going to do. Mm -hmm. But it says, teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. You know, if I said to myself, I'm going to speak to, um, I want to, you know, I want to, I want to win souls this this year. You know, this me at the end of the year. I want to win souls in the next year. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to win. I'm going to speak to, uh, I'm going to speak to 30 people in the, in the course of the year. You know, that's a very, very conservative. I'm going to speak to 30 people in the course of the year. When I make that decision at the end of the, at the end of uh, that night, I, I don't feel any urgency to speak to 30 people because I feel I've got one year to do it. There's only 30 people. I've got a whole year to do it. Why am I talking about this? He said, teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. So he says, so I say, okay, uh, I've got, I've got uh, 30 people. But if I say to myself, sometimes if I say 30 people, I may not speak to anybody until June because I feel I've got one year to speak to 30 people. How difficult can it be? But if I say to myself, I'm going to speak to one person person every day that is different from saying I'm going to speak to 30 people in a year. So teach us to number our days. So when we're thinking about the things that God wants us to do, one of the questions I'm asking myself all the time is what can I not do about it now? Amen. Because sometimes we always postpone it. We always feel, well, God said it, but you know, maybe, maybe tomorrow, maybe tomorrow, maybe tomorrow I'll do it. Maybe let's just be, don't worry. I'll get there. I'll get around to it. But most of the time we don't get around to it. And guess what? We're getting older and older. I remember somebody, you know, we had this, somebody, you know, they, you, you just light a candle. The candle is burning. The candle keeps burning. So is your life, brethren. The candle is burning. So is your life. That is, what, you know, we used to have, when we used to have reduce, what, what is the thing that goes up but never comes down? And that is your age. It never comes down, brethren. It's always going up. As you're marking one day, it's going up. You're marking another day, it's going up. You're marking one year, it's going up. Before you know it, 
And guess what? The moment you actually cross the 50s, and then you, it, it goes quicker. Amen. I don't know why, but it goes quicker. So what am I saying today? I'm encouraging somebody. I said, God called you for a purpose. He said, concerning Jesus Christ in the book of Hebrews, uh, it, it says, it says uh, according to the multitude of books, is written concerning me. He said, I've come to do your will, your will alone. That's what he said. It does not have desire for sacrifices he's not interested but he wanted he said a body you have prepared for me mm -hmm. uh, you know and, and that is one of the things i want us to take away from tonight he says concerning abraham in the same hebrews in in the in the hall of fame of faith he says concerning abraham he said well, well <laughs> let, let me let me see if maybe we can read this actually hebrews hebrews 11 it, it, it says something there that i believe is very um very interesting talking about Abraham. Praise the Lord. I know I've only got five minutes, but this will be worthwhile. It says in Hebrews 11, it says, By faith he dwelt in the land of promise as in a foreign country. He was in the land of promise as in a foreign dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs of this, the, the, the heirs with him of the same promise. He said, for he waited for the city which has foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Mm -hmm. He waited for a city who, that has foundations, whose builder and maker is God. It got to a point, Abraham was tired of this world. He was no longer interested. He was waiting for another place. He was waiting for a different place. And that's where God, that's why Jesus said, look, you said you've got to set your affections on the things above. Because if you, if that's where your affections are, he said, everything about you will think about heaven. Amen. And you know what? Whether we like it or not, when the time comes, we don't have a choice in the matter. Amen. We don't have, you know, in the same book, book of it that's the in fact i feel like reading the whole book do you know the, the whole chapter but i'm not going to read the whole chapter i won't bore you with the whole chapter it says in verse 35 it says women received their deads raised to life again others this is where i'm going others were tortured not accepting deliverance that they might obtain a better resurrection still others had trials of mockings and scourgings yes and of chains and imprisonment verse 37 it says they were stoned it says they were sown in two were tempted were slain with a sword they were wounded about they, they, they wondered they wondered about in sheep skins and goat skins being destitute afflicted tormented of whom the world was not worthy they were oh, oh god the world was not worthy of them they wandered in desert and uh, desert and mountains in dens and caves of the earth that is talking about some people but they would not accept that deliverance you know i read i read loads of stuff about about the persecution of the early church i read about the persecution during the roman time i read some of the things some of the things that we take for granted now people were killed for it mm -hmm. you know the people all, all they had to do sometimes was just to take incense and throw it into the fire that is burning on the altar to 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 uh, to um to 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 a god to a roman god oh that was all they had to do it was so it was so flimsy as far as the roman emperor uh what's his name was concerned that he, he said he said i do not understand the plight of the christians mm -hmm. why would anybody rather go offer themselves to be killed than just to just all you got to do is just take incense and throw it into the fire you then they're not even saying you should say anything just take incense and throw it and they said no we will not do it mm -hmm. amen and they, uh, so when we are living our lives amen this brief this brief life that we that we that we've got let's remember that some people Amen. When we you know, when, when you're going through your, your list of prayer and you're, you're ticking them off, just remember that some people lived this life that we're reading about. And guess what? Their salvation is not different from my salvation. Mm -hmm. the, you know, the judgments that God is going to measure out is not different from the judgment in today's world. As a matter of fact, it probably be more severe with us because the Bible says to whom much is given, more is expected. Amen. I, I just pray, you know, that 
I, I know my time is my time is up. I've got one minute, but please, as we live our lives, there is one thing that God has commissioned me to do. It is my it is my it is my it is my ultimate agenda to find it. I must find it, and after I found it, I must fulfill it. Somebody said there are two very important days in the life of a man: the day that he was born and the day that he realizes why. That is extremely important. I need to understand. It's not enough to be born again. I'm born again now. Why? Why has God invested so much into me? Why has God allowed me to go through the things I've gone through? Why has God blessed me with so much? Why am I, why am I, why do I have an opportunity to listen to this word? Because darkness will cover the earth. Gross darkness will cover the people. But the light will the, the, the light of God will rise upon me for a reason for a reason alone. He said, yeah, he said, I've come in the multitude of books. I've come to do your will. That is what God expects from every single one of us. Mm-hmm. But uh, like, uh, like we always say, he says, I wish above all, he said, I beseech you brethren, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Mm-hmm. Because we can only be talking about his will when we're already a living sacrifice. Mm-hmm. He says concerning, as I'm, ran- as I'm running up right now, he says concerning John the Baptist, God, they came to him, they said, are you the poor? are you the prophet? He said, no, I'm not the prophet. I'm just a voice in the wilderness. I don't know what God has called you to be, but are you willing to just be a voice for God in the wilderness? That's all he's asking. He's not asking you to do miracles. He's not asking you to, to raise the dead. It's not. He just wants you to do that thing that he has commissioned you to do. Be a voice for him in your office. Be a voice for him among your friends. Be a voice for him on the bus. Be a voice for God in the city. Be a voice for God in the village. That that will suffice. I pray that God will find us faithful. It is, it, is, it is required of a steward that man be find, found faithful. I pray God will find us faithful in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Life is brief. Thank you, man of God. Over to you, sir. Amen. 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 Uh, that's our big brother, Pastor Abby. Uh, that was awesome. Awesome. Be a voice. If I, I will even forget everything, your, your summation was everything that we have to be a voice, that our assignment, our purpose must be at display. We must fulfill our purpose. You can, you can have all the names, they might, you, have, have, you can have all the positions, whatever it takes, but the day you get to know your purpose, then you start living. Actually, that's the day you are actually born. The day you were born is the one that your parents will tell you were born this day. But the day you will actually be born is the day you find your purpose. And as, you, as soon as you find it, as soon as you take the baton, just like a four by one, as soon as you take it, you don't watch back. You keep going to get to the end, whether they last or not, you just keep going. Mm. So all it takes that will know our purpose. Mm. It doesn't matter what, if God has given you 70 years, 60, 50, that is not your concern. The factory, they do their own thing. They place the label and they put the sparring date. So if God puts 60 on you or 50 on you, that is his own problem. Yours is to fulfill your purpose. Mm. Make sure you are in the container and make sure you behave yourself. And whatever they've told you to do, just do it. See, today we are blessed to have Pastor B here, a great man of God, to give us this word. What did he say? Be a voice. Because some of us, we carry something in there, and yet we are quiet. Because we don't have anyone to tell us that you are powerful. You don't need all those those fans and whatever. There is something already in there. God already told you in the Bible. If you are waiting for a prophet to tell you, then you are late. Because it was already written in the Bible that God has made you somebody special. So you carry a voice, like he said. And I pray that today, whoever you are, wherever you are, know that you are a voice. And the world is waiting for you. Destinies are waiting for you. There are great men who are waiting for you. Do not look at your position today because a fisherman never knew that you follow Jesus and he's going to have books in the Bible. Never, ever thought about that. Matthew never thought about it. He just thought about his money and how to multiply it on the table. More tax. But today, look, we are reading about Matthew. The same way you might be in a village, you might mess up many times, but God is calling you. Once you come, he will give you a position that you will never forget. God bless you, man of God. And uh, woman of God, we salute you. We will be having you next week. Uh, we are patiently waiting. God bless you so very much. Now, all the way from Ghana, um, our main good friend, Elder McJoris. You are welcome, sir. Can you hear me? Good evening, sir. I 
All right. Good evening. Um, we bless God for this wonderful evening. Um, Pastor Abi, God bless you for such a powerful ministration. Um, we thank you for availing yourself to be used by the Lord. I personally salute all the men and women of God on the platform. God bless each and every one. Amen. One thing that I will plead is that um, it is significant and very crucial that we begin to spread the word. So as we listen, we spread or we share with others. So it will be a blessing unto their souls. Amen. As of all, we are looking at the brevity of life. And so quickly, I want us to look at Psalm 90, verse 12. And I'm reading from the NLT. Teach us to realize the brevity of life so that we may grow in wisdom. Teach us to realize the brevity of life so that we may grow in wisdom. This was a prayer Moses prayed. A lot of people are praying for a lot of things. But to prophet Moses, he was wondering how people were dying and exiting and departing from the earth. So if there was anything that was dear to his heart, it was the matter of when he was going to leave the earth. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse number 5 to 7. I'm reading from the Maswell Leadership Bible. Also, they are afraid of height and of the terror in the way and when the almond tree blossom, this is talking about old age. Almond tree, talking about the gray hair, is 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 gradually, you know, your your hair is growing, you know, and you are also growing. And the grasshopper is a burden. That is trying to say that even little things, you know become a problem unto you and desire fails your appetite your ambitions your goals and your objective will all come to an end why for man goes to his eternal home and the mourners go about the streets <laughs> there is news in town because man goeth to his eternal home. Verse 6. Remember your creator before the silver cord is loosed. Also, for, there's what we call the umbilical cord. This is the cord that links or connects the baby to the womb of the mother. And so what is this silver cord? The silver cord is the bread of life that connects the body to the soul. And so a, a time is coming that the silver cord will be broken and it will be loosed. Or the golden bow is broken. Or the picture is shattered at the fountain. This is talking about our blood. This is talking about our heart. This is talking about our brain. And, and it continues to say that or the wheel is Broken at the well. This is talking about your veins and your lungs. This just to say that the whole system where blood circulates through the body system is going to cease. The heart will not function anymore. Your lungs will not work anymore. Your bones will not work anymore. And the silver cord is broken. The spirit that God breathed into Adam and he becoming a living soul is taken out of the man. Verse number seven. 
then the dust will return to dust. Oh God. From where it came from, and the spirit will return to God. As of all, a time is coming. Everything we see in the life, in the body of a man, just like a vehicle, who, which has developed, you know, a fault, an engine fault, or there's a breakdown of engine in the middle of a lowly, you know, you know, path where there is no fitting shop. It means that this car will have to be, you know, dragged by another car. This is how the human life, this is how we, our lives and this body we cherish so much. This is how the end will look like. Also, tonight might be the first time I am preaching on the core network. And maybe, you know, it, it, it might be the first time because of the subject of discussion. And it may also be the last time I am preaching because I don't know what tomorrow or the next one hour holds for me. If tomorrow morning, you hear that I am dead or so forth. That is what God, that is the, the that is what God in his own mind has accumulated unto me. My days are numbered. My days are numbered. My, my, my spirit is so down or so forth. And like Ellen, you know, Ellen Woody said something, and he said, It is not that I am afraid to die. But I just don't want to be there when it happens. I am not afraid to die, but I just don't want to be there when it happens. Also, for life is a mystery that must be must be lived with agency and carefulness. Because you see, very soon the graves will give each and every one of us a welcome address and a permanent residential address. Welcome to your final home. We were once like you. The greatest wisdom man can ever acquire on this earth, Ozofo, the greatest knowledge man can ever acquire on this, on this planet, is the knowledge about the brevity of life. With all your degree, with all your PhD in economics, in science, in mathematics, the greatest discovery you can ever make is the brevity of your personal life. When you will depart from this earth, when you will exit this earth, Hallelujah. Lani Messi, Lani Messi says something. In August 2021, and he said, and I read, I would have loved to stay here. That is Barcelona. I did everything with this goal in my mind. Hmm. But in the end, it didn't happen. Azafo, we are like a Messi in Barcelona. Very soon, PSG will come for you. And I am just asking, will you be happy or you'll be sad? When Messi was saying this, he was crying. I, have, I would have loved to be here. If I had the opportunity, I would have loved to be here. And I had this goal in my mind. But in the end, it couldn't happen. The brevity of life. Adolfo. The fuel for life is time. The fuel for life is time. And so it is necessary that each and every day 
as we see day and as we, we, we are given the opportunity to live on this earth, we make meaningful, we live meaningful lives. The brevity of life is as a, a personal rapture. It is like a personal, you know, a, a day where, where almost everything about your life ceases. The brevity of life is the gathering of clouds, which I call death. The grave, also for the grave is the dustbin and the refuse dump for this human body. And very soon, with all the glory you are trying to give this body, very soon, with all the decoration you are giving this body, dust will return to dust. Hallelujah. Death is recruiting people to hell. Death is recruiting people on daily basis to heaven. Even as we are speaking on this plat platform right now, people are dying. Death is recruiting people either for hell or heaven. And so life is an enemy to death. And death is an enemy to life. They are in great contention. There's a battle between life and death. Hallelujah. We are like tenants on this earth. And as such, we must live our lives as people who are in a journey to a destination. Psalm 89, the verse number 48. What man can live and not see death? Can he deliver his life from the power of the grave? Is it possible to deliver yourself from the power of the grave? Because you see, also for, in as much as we pray for long life, in as much as we pray for good health, in as much as we pray for prosperity, in as much as we pray for power, in as much as we pray for victory, also for, we must begin to seek the end of our life. We must begin to know the date, the time, the hour, and the minute that we will exit this life. As if you, as if you can see me in my funeral clothes. Today, I have gone for three funerals. And one of them, the last one that I attended, was awful. A man and a man with his first daughter, that is first child, they were buried today. The man was 65 and the daughter was 35. They buried them today. Both the father and the daughter today. The end of life. The brevity of life. I love the wisest people on earth. The wisest people on earth are people who can discern, who can, who can, who can actually calculate, who can actually, you know, formulate how best and how possible they are time of existence on earth. The best kind of, the wisest people are people who think about tomorrow and how they will exit this land. Don't be a fool to think that you will live on this earth forever. Tomorrow is not in your hands. Anything can happen. Anything can happen. I want us to read Luke chapter 16. Luke 16, the verse number 19. Luke 16, the verse number 19. Luke chapter 16, the verse number 19. There was a certain rich man who was clothed in purple 
and fine linen and fed sumptuously every day, every day. <laughs> but there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, full of souls, who was laid at the gate of this rich man, desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs, moreover, even the dogs came to lick his soul. So it was that the beggar died and was carried by angels to Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried and being in torment in pace, he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham far off and Lazarus in his bosom. Then he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip, his, he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in flames. But Abraham said, son, remember that in your lifetime, you receive good things and likewise Lazarus, evil things. But now he is comforted and you are tormented. Huh. And, and beside all this, between us is a great gulf fixed so that those who want to pass from here to you cannot, nor those, nor can those from your there pass unto us. Then he said, I beg you, therefore, Father, that you would send me to my father's house. Mm. That for I have five brothers, that they may testify that he that he may testify to them, lest they also come to this place of torment. Then he said, Abraham said, they have Moses and the prophet on the land. Hallelujah. Also, quickly, from this test, there are about five things I want us to notice. One, a life lived for self looks short. But a life that is lived for others is prolonged. That is to say that income without impact is vanity. And so for the other day I said that it is not about what I do for a living, but what I am doing for the living. Impact is superior to income. He lived in luxury. He was, he was fed sumptuously on daily basis. Yet a beggar, a man full of soul, was laid at his gate on daily basis. And this man did, did nothing about the condition of Lazarus. Pastor Isaac says something. We have not lived unto until others have lived through us. We have not lived until others have lived through us. We must make our days on earth count. In as much as you are trying to make a name for yourself, think about others. Because God said, Abraham, I am making you a blessing so that you become a blessing unto others. Then somebody said, when God increases, you know, your, your, your level of income, don't increase your level of spending, but rather increase your level of giving. So we must begin to transform lives. We must begin to renew mind. We must begin to reform hearts. And we must begin to restore people into the kingdom. The man lived in Lazarus, but Lazarus was suffering at his gate. Then the Bible was the Bible was clear on something that even the dogs 
were licking the wounds of this poor man. Why did the, the Bible use this, you know, kind of words? Even the dogs. When a dog licks your wound, it heals you. It gives you comfort. Scientifically, it has been, it has been proven that, you know, the saliva that is, that is, that is given out of the dogs sometimes may heal the wound. This is what the church is failing to do. There was a rich man, a rich church. The pastor is living sumptuously on daily basis, building and going after cars, changing clothes each and every Sunday. Yet there are poor people at the gate called beautiful and nobody is giving them a helping hand. Let the church be the church the brevity of life. Dear pastor, dear doctor, dear nurse, dear teacher, make an impact in the lives of people. One day, one day you exit this life and the legacy you leave become a ground upon which others can also stand, elevate somebody, help somebody, push somebody. He lived in luxury and, and, and this man was living in pain and agony. He was suffering on daily basis, crying and picking out food from the ground. Even the dogs. Also, for the sad aspect is that this same dog that can heal the wound, this same dog can also make the wound you know, ex, you know, expand or explode, let me put it that way. Also for today, people are going out of the church to see false prophet. Why? The church is not helping them. He lived in luxury. Like the good Samaritan, what are we doing to help others? How can we take them to the hospital? Somebody is, in, in, is dying. Somebody is going to hell. What are you doing to support that person? Number two, what we see in the test is that death is not the respecter of persons. Death is a common denominator. Death is a universal, you know, canker. Death is not afraid of Queen Elizabeth. Death is not afraid of Darkon. Or so for Isaac, death is not afraid of you. Death is not afraid of Archbishop in the Hosa. Death is not afraid. Death is not the respecter of persons. With all your PAD, with all your luxury, with all your cars, with all your mansion, one day you will exit this life. Mark Jackson wanted to live for 150 years. And so even the water that he would drink, it needed to be tested, yet he lived for only 50 years. The great Alexander, the great Alexander, he conquered and he was powerful. But one day he said, vanity is vanity. Let the world know that the day that death will come after you, not even the best doctors on this earth can you know, rescue you. Death is not... <laughs> Death is not the respecter of any person, anybody at all. No matter your position, no matter your credentials, no matter the wealth you have acquired, no matter the possession you have, no matter the connections you have, also for one day you will exit this earth. Death is not the respecter of people. Fame, luxury, wealth, position will come to nothing. The day death will be seeking after your life. Just get ready because tomorrow might be your turn. One pastor said, each day you are receiving calls that somebody is dead. A day is coming. Somebody will call somebody that you are also dead. Are you prepared? The brevity of life. Like in Hezekiel, you can pray. You can pray for all you care for additional years, yet you will die. Number two, number three, death is either a gain or a pain. 
Therefore, the death of this physical life is the birth of eternity. The death of this physical life is the birth of our eternal life. The rich man died and the poor man also died, but they found themselves in two destinations, two residential places. And at the end of the day, the rich man was in torment and Lazarus was in comfort. Therefore, death is that transportation system that will take us into eternal life. And so Paul said that for me to die is a gain because he knew his stance. Hallelujah. Will you be comforted as you are listening to me, dear brother or dear sister? Will you be comforted or you will be in torment? There is a place of torment, hell, lake of fire is waiting for you. And so he lifted up his eyes and he saw Lazarus. And he was asking for water. Don't forget that Jesus Christ is the cloth we put on. Just like in Genesis chapter 7. Genesis chapter 3 verse 7. When Adam and Eve sinned, they wanted to use the, the, the leaves of the fig tree to cover themselves. But in verse 21, God killed an animal. The lamp that was slain from the beginning, the foundation of the earth to cover them. That is the cloth. You can be bragging of all the designer clothes. But if Christ is not covering you, you are a waste. You will end up in torment. Therefore, your habits today in time or in this life determines your habitats tomorrow in eternity. The way we are going about living our lives carelessly will determine where our lives will end. There's life after life. And there's life after death. Life is a journey. Life is a journey that begins with death into another life. Hallelujah. Number four, life is timeless. There is an unknown appointed time. We don't know what killed Lazarus. And we don't know what killed the rich man. But at a point in time, they all died. It is appointed unto Darkon that maybe next week I will die. Also, for what will happen? It is appointed unto doc doctor that maybe next two months you will die. What will happen? With all the ideas in your head, what will happen? Also, for Isaac, there is, there is an appointment God is having with you. Death is uncertain. Nobody knows when he will go. It is like the second coming of Christ. It will hit you without you being prepared. Hallelujah. He thought in his mind that he was going to live forever. The rich fool, and he said in his heart, that my soul enjoy, for there are many days ahead of you. Not knowing that it was his last time on earth. Amen. Lastly, as of all, a life that is lived without Christ is senseless, is unprofitable. When the man entered hell, he started asking for water. As of all, this is the water that Christ asked when he was hanging on the cross. And so according to John chapter 4, verse number 21 down, Bible makes it clear that when Jesus met this Samaritan woman, he said, the water that I am going to give to you, John chapter 4, maybe I'll end here, John chapter 4. John chapter 4. Then the woman said, no, John, John chapter 4, verse number 13. Jesus answered and said to her, Whoever drinks the water or this water will not be thirsty again. So, so you can be drinking all the best, you know, kind of water on earth. 
but you will continue to go thirsty. But there's this type of water. Once it enters your soul, you will not be thirsty again. But whoever drinks the water that I shall give him will never be thirsty. But the water that I shall give him will become a fountain of water sprinkling up into everlasting life. Jesus is the water we drink. Jesus is the bread of life we eat. And Jesus is the cloth we put on. In eternity, you will only enter comfort if you can be identified with Christ. In eternity, if you are not identified with Christ, you will enter torment. Christ is the cloth we put on. Hallelujah. Also, for what then is expected of me? Life is short. What then is expected of me as a believer? Number one, be kingdom-minded. Be the Moses and the prophet. The man said, Father Abraham, also for, can, you, can you imagine the rich man calling Abraham father and Abraham calling the rich man son? On the day of judgment, also for, there will be no consideration. And this is why the church must rise up. There are people in the church who are going to hell. Father, have mercy upon me. He thought Abraham was the father, so he could, he could, he could live any kind of life, but he ended up in torment. Also, let us begin to be kingdom-minded. We are the Moses and the prophet on the earth. People are going to hell on daily basis. We can't afford to let the source of men rot in destruction or in eternal, you know, eternal uh, 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 destruction. Hallelujah. He said, I have five brothers who are also, you know, in lane coming to this place. If life is short, the best way we can live our life is to make sure that people's soul are secured. Hallelujah. Number two, be eternity driven. Be eternity driven. Live wisely, not like the foolish virgins. Remember that you are a tent and very soon the wind will just blow you off. But there is a building, there is a house that is not built by the hands of men, but it is built by our Lord Jesus. That is our comfort home. Be eternity driven. Don't let the world entice you. Do not love the things of the earth. Make sure you are eternity driven. Now, in Amos chapter 4 verse 12, the B part says that prepare to meet your Lord. And Isaiah chapter 31, 38, verse number one, says, put your house in order. As of all, if you are eternity driven, one, each and every day of your life, you will prepare for Christ. Because you don't know how you will die. You don't know when you will die. You don't know how you will exit this age. May God have mercy on us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Um, Elder McJoris, thank you so very much. Uh, you really powered up. And uh, that was a great message. Um, the brevity of life. You can see the seriousness in his speech. And uh, I believe that everyone that is hearing uh, will be touched by this message so that we don't take our life for granted. There are so many things I have said. I believe that later I can go on YouTube um, to recap on this wonderful message. Man of God, God bless you so very much. Without wasting my time, uh, we we'll call upon our brother, Pastor Ross Nikwe Kote. Man of God, you are welcome. Thank you, Dr. Daniel, for having me. I am grateful once again for this opportunity. And to all my seniors, Pastor Abi and Elder McJoris, I want to say a very big thank you for the great Bible exposition. Um, without wasting much time, kindly turn with me in your Bible to Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27. Hebrews chapter 9, the verse 27. 
and it says, and as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this judgment, and as it's appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. Still on the brevity of life, I want to share on the subtitle, what matters, what matters. This verse of scripture teaches us four main things. Number one, everyone has an appointment with this. Everyone has an appointment with death. Number two, death is part of the human life. Death is part of the human life. Everyone has an appointment with death and death is part of the human life. Number three, you die only once, you die only once. Everyone has an appointment with death. Death is part of the human life, but you die only once. Number four, after you die, there is judgment. After you die, there is judgment. So everyone has an appointment with death. Death is part of the human life. You die only once. And after you die, there is judgment. But there is one major question that we need to ask about this test. And the question is, when is my appointment with death? When is my appointment with death? If I'm applying for an American visa and I book an appointment, I am given a date for my appointment. But in this test, although man is appointed to die, man is not given expressly the date of his or her death. That is to tell you how short life is. As we go about our daily activities, as we go about doing all that we have to do, we cannot tell for sure when our appointment with death is. That is why you must live consciously, knowing well that the next second cannot be vouched for. Let's look an account in the book of Luke chapter 12 reading from the verse 13 to 21. Luke chapter 12, reading from the verse 13 to 21. And one of the company said unto him, Master, speak to my brother that he divide the inheritance with me. And he said unto him, Man, who had made me judge or a divider over you? And he said unto them, Take heed, and beware of covetousness, for a man's life consisted not in the abundance of the things which he possesseth. And he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plenty. And he thought unto himself, saying, what shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestow my fruits. And he said, this will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater. And there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say unto my soul, so thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thy ease, eat, drink and be merry. But God said unto him, thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then whose shall these things be which thou hast provided? Verse 21. So is he that layeth up treasure for himself 
and is not rich toward God. This is an account of two brothers who were living here on the earth. And one came to Jesus and said, Jesus, please tell my brother to divide the inheritance and hand to me over my portion. In life, we are all entitled to something. And this man was making a genuine request. He was asking for something which was rightfully his. And Jesus asked and said, who made me, Jesus, a judge over you? Who made me a Lord over you? In as much as you are asking for what is good, you need to have understanding that a man's life does not consist of the things he or she possesses, which means don't place so much value on the inheritances of life. Don't place so much value on the wealth of life. Don't place so much value on earthly things. Why? Because there is a hereafter. And in this hereafter, all that you are wanting to accumulate to yourself will not matter. So the question is, if the inheritance will not matter, what then will matter in this life? And Jesus gave a parable of a rich man who had labored. This man had worked very hard and had made a lot of possession. So much to eat, so much to drink. Bible said he has covered many years ahead of him. This is a man who has made investments which can cover his children's children. Just as scripture said, he has left an inheritance for his children's children. And everything was intact. And he said, because of what I have gained for myself, it is time for me to relax and enjoy life. And like many of us, we are relaxed and enjoying life, enjoying the benefits that our companies are giving us, enjoying the benefits that our families have given us, enjoying the benefits that we are, got, we are getting from friends and all of that. That was the kind of life he's living. Then Jesus said, God in heaven made an interesting statement. He said, this man is a foolish man. My question to you today is, are you living foolishly? Why would Jesus say this man is living foolishly? Bible said this man in the verse 21 was laying up treasures for himself, but he was not rich towards God. May I announce to you that a life which is lived in affluence without being rich towards God is a foolish life as far as God is concerned. Let me say it again, since you didn't hear. A life which is lived in affluence, which is not rich towards God, is a life foolishly lived. Maybe you didn't hear, let me tell you one more time. God is not against hard work. God is not against investment. God is not against you prospering. But if all of these things does not communicate in becoming rich towards God, it is a foolish life. Why? Because for everything that you have gained in this life, God gave it to you. And for everything that God has given to you, God requires that you also give to somebody. If all that you are living in affluence is not rich towards God, then it is a foolish life. So one may ask, what then matters in this life? Let me share with you briefly. Jesus said, I was naked and you didn't clothe me. Jesus said, I was in the prison and you didn't visit me. Jesus said, I was sick and you didn't visit me in the hospital. If all of the affluence you have in this life doesn't clothe others, if all of the influence you have in this life does not visit others, if all of the influence you have in this life does not benefit the life of others, it is a foolish life. And ladies and gentlemen, when you live a foolish life, your life will always be shortened. Hezekiah had an extension of life because he was rich towards God. May I announce to you, although life is short, when you are rich towards the God that we serve, he can show you mercy and elongate your life. 
your appointment date might be due, but when you are reached towards God, your life can be extended. So Jesus is teaching us a principle that you can use to extend your life here on the earth. There was an account of a young lady that died. And when Jesus Christ came on the scene, he asked what happened and everything was said that this was the kind of lady that was dead. And Jesus said, because of the good works of this lady, she didn't deserve to die. And because of that, she was called back to life. When you are reached towards God, heaven defends your life. When you are reached towards God, heaven makes sure that you are preserved. What kills others does not kill you. No wonder all that you have is spent on medical bills because you don't know what the God you serve is. So this man had it all, yet his life was made short simply because he was not rich towards God. So what matters in this life? What will matter at the end of it all is your giving to God. One may say, but I don't see God, so how do I give to God? That pastor in your church is a medium by which you can give to God. The church you attend is a medium by which you can give to God. That brother or sister in the church who has, who has run out of clothes, who is trying to survive in that uh, half shoe, who is trying to survive in that dilapidated house, who is trying to survive on three square meals a day, that is your richness towards God. And today, God is calling you to come to the place, not of a rich fool, but of a rich wise man, that you will be the one who heaven would identify and acknowledge that indeed you are rich towards God. And the benefit to which is that, is that your life can be elongated. May God help you. May God help me to be rich towards God. Number two. What matters in this life? What also matters in this life is the anointing that God has given to you. For everything God calls you to, he has anointed you for. For everything God calls you to, he has anointed you for. We have heard since last week that it is very important for you to live a life of purpose. And you begin to live only when you have discovered your purpose. But be it known unto you that for the purpose which God has called you to, there is an equivalent anointing to match that purpose. Bible said how God anointed Jesus Christ with Holy Ghost and power that he went about doing good. You can only be reached towards God when you allow the anointing of God over your life to begin to work. The anointing doesn't only work in you, but the anointing must also work out of you. And it takes the anointing of God. It takes the grace of God. It takes the oil of God for you to be able to be compassionate for the next person that is seated around you for you to be able to be compassionate for the Lazarus who is seated at the table, who is not eating assumptions as you are eating. Let the anointing of God in your life work towards others. How God anointed Jesus Christ. And when he was anointed, the Bible said, he went about doing good. The reason why Jesus was quick in doing good is simply because he knew that life was short. Don't fight over things don't, which don't matter in this life. Don't kill yourself over things which does not matter in this life. Very few things will matter. Your richness towards God, allowing the anointing on your work to work for others also to benefit from your anointing. And then number three, make way for others to be in the place that you are today. 
These are the things which will matter in this life. Let me explain it to you. You and I have been to several funerals. We have been to several funeral services. One thing is always clear during the funeral service. We always talk about the life lived by the dead person. In this life which is lived by the dead person, these three things I have made mention will always be written, will always come out in the person's life's biography. The people he was rich towards, the people that he allowed the anointing on his life to work for, and then the people that he elevated to come to the very place that he was. If you die without having a successor, you have lived a foolish life. If all that God has graced you with, you die without having anyone to live in that state, you have lived a foolish life. Let's look at Jesus Christ. He was called alone by God, but by the time he was exiting here on earth, he had 12 more people to occupy his position. Let me say it again, since you didn't hear. Jesus Christ, the one we are following as Christians, was not only rich towards people, did not only allow the anointing on his life to work for people, but also he made sure that before he exited, he had 12 more solid people to do what he could do. Guess what he said? He said, greater works than these will you also do. The God we serve is a generational thinker. And in as much as God has said that man has an appointment with death, what will matter will not only be your richness towards God, will not only be your anointing working for others also, but will also be that the people you were able to raise to take the reins of power when you are no more. If these three things are out of your life, my brother, my sister, you have lived foolishly. It will not matter the car you drove. It will not matter the house you lived in. It will not matter the amount of money you have in your savings account. It will not matter how beautiful your wife is. It will not matter the clothes you have in your wardrobe. If these three things cannot be mentioned about your life, you have lived foolishly. Life is short, but you and I can make the most out of this life. Be rich towards God. Let the anointing on your life work for others. And make sure that before you exit this life, you will have successes, men and women who can take the reins of power and continue and advance the very purpose or the very assignment God gave you here on earth. It is then that we can sit back and say, this man lived a glorious life here on earth. May God help you wherever you are to be able to live this kind of life that you will be rich towards God, that you will be rich towards the things of God, that you will not have an issue given to the very work of God, that you will not have an issue given to the very good works of God. May God bring you to the place where the anointing upon your life will not only work for you, but will also work for others. May God bring you to the place where the grace of God upon your life will begin to work for others. May God bring you to the place where the anointing of God upon your life will work on your inside and work on your outside also. And above all, may God help you. May God give you the grace to identify the men and women that he has positioned in your life to take the reins of power to continue the kingdom agenda. May God open your eyes to see the men and women that God has identified to be connected to your destiny, who will take the reins of power and run the agenda God has given to you. Life is short, but with these three things together, we will live a fruitful life. I know you have some few more years to live, I know you are desiring that you will not die, but one thing is certain. We all have an appointment with death. And what I'm sharing with you today, you cannot postpone to tomorrow. 
what I'm sharing with you today, you cannot postpone to tomorrow. As I'm talking to you now, there's somebody who's has, who, who has come into your mind that you need to pick a phone and call and find out how that person is doing. Ladies and gentlemen, there is somebody you must send help to now. There is somebody you must reach out to now. There is somebody who just needs your help now. Please don't postpone it. There is somebody who is at stake now, needing your anointing. Don't hold on to that prayer. Lift up your voice and then pray for that person. Lift up your voice and pray for that person. But beyond that, the sons and the daughters that God has placed around you, it is time for you to raise them up. These are the things which will matter in this life. Life is short, but we can make the most of it by being rich towards God, by letting the anointing on our lives work for others, and by making sure that we have raised men and women who can take the reins of power and continue the very assignments God has given us. May it be said of us that we were good and faithful servants. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Thank you, Dr. Daniel. I'm grateful, sir. Amen, amen, amen. Such a powerful exposition. God bless you so very much, man of God. Uh, with a prayer that was shared with everyone that is listening, I believe that uh, wherever you are, you've been prayed for. And we believe that God will touch your life. God will touch your heart. And you begin to draw near unto him and begin to number your days according to the wisdom of God. Uh, we thank you all for joining in, those who join on uh, Facebook. Uh, we just want to say that God bless you all. The most important thing is to share the message. You can consume everything now. You go later to YouTube and just watch over and over again and make sure this word has really entered into you and has transformed you. We just want to say a big thank you to Pastor Abby. Uh, Elder McJoris and Pastor Ross. It's been a wonderful time. God bless you so very much, everyone. Uh, till we meet again next week, stay blessed and highly favored.